This week's show brought to you by Roosters, a fun casual joint. Frank Shoup, Georgetown's big name in cars. The Insurance Store, Chenault and Hogue Incorporated. Welcome everybody to the Scott County Cardinals News Graphic Boys Basketball KHS AA Sweet 16 show, coaches show. It's, uh, it's exciting for the second straight year to be talking about the Scott County boys as they are headed back to Rupp Arena. The road to Rupp has been a good one for SC. 34-1, 26 consecutive wins, undefeated against Kentucky teams. And we will uh, back that all up by saying barely after Monday night, uh, last Monday night in the regional final against Lexington Christian Academy. What a game. Let's try to revisit that a little bit at this point. Uh, first of all, let's talk about what led up to that. Uh, Scott County had to beat Madison Southern, which they did with ease. Had to beat Lafayette, which they did with ease. Running clock in both games. Sometimes that's not what you want going into a game against a team that's almost as red hot as you are. And that's what LCA was. 27 and 7. They started the season 7 and 5. Their only losses, uh, la only loss lately was the Lexington Catholic, and they avenged that in the 43rd District Tournament. They rolled through the first two rounds as well. Well, they had a tough game against Madison Southern, or rather Madison Central in the semifinals, and that's kind of why I was a little nervous about this game, is they were well prepared, kind of iron sharpens iron thing, and coming off that game. Uh, they came in with a world of confidence and showed it. It was just back and forth all night. Neither team led by more than five points in the entire game. SC jumped out 5-0. Lexington Christian came back, tied it uh, multiple times in the first quarter, took the lead in the second, took the lead in the third, early in the third, and then Carter Hendrickson, uh, one of their two Division I bound players, along with Kyle Rode, who was simply magnificent in this tournament. Hendrickson had a driving layup to put his team up by three points, but he hit the ground, hit the floor hard, sprained his ankle and did not return to the game and uh, that was a huge thing but uh, I know a lot of people will say well it is too bad and, and rightfully so that LCA couldn't uh, couldn't finish the game with its best lineup on the floor I think you got to look at uh, that it affected Scott County's defense a little bit too Hendrickson a six foot seven matchup in the middle they were going right uh, they were trying to get the ball and take the ball to the hoop and get fouled most of the game that was their strategy Without that, they started taking more threes, and you can see Scott County slow to react to that, uh, leaving a lot of shooters open in the third and fourth quarter. They paid for it a couple of times, but SC managed to take a 44-40 lead on a dunk by Michael Marino with about a minute to go. Shortly before that, Michael had scored his 2,000th career point. Let's give him a shout-out for that at the end of his junior year. That's simply amazing. But then Kyle Rode almost willed his team to victory, scored a couple of buckets consecutively as LCA got a stop in between to tie the game at 44 with about 50 seconds to go. And then Scott County played for one shot, or at least they thought they were playing for one shot. Cooper Robb drives to the basket, gets fouled with 10.1 seconds remaining in regulation. Cooper and Diablo Stewart are probably the two guys neck and neck for, in the battle for who you would want to be at the line in that situation. And sure enough, Cooper hits both free throws to put SC up 46-44. Now, if you're paying attention to the score, you know it's about half what Scott County is used to scoring. They averaged 80.9 points per game during the season, and LCA used that zone defense to slow the game down, make it kind of, a, kind of ugly at times. It was a physical battle. That's what they wanted. They certainly asserted their tempo. Scott County didn't help by missing a bunch of threes, three for 20 in the game. Couldn't bring them out of that zone with its outside shooting. So now they're up two with 10 seconds left. LCA with no timeouts, pushes the ball down the floor. Scott County presses a little bit, so it forces them to struggle to get up just in time for one shot from the corner by Will Hacker. I gotta tell you, at the press table, I thought that shot was going down and that the season was over, but it hit back rim. Austin Hall got the rebound for LCA. Michael Marino got an arm up and swatted it down. The shot probably would not have counted anyway, as you can see the lights on the backboard go off as the horn went off and the celebration ensued for Scott County. It's second consecutive 40, uh, rather 11th region championship. It's 16th overall uh, region. That includes the days back when they were in the eighth region. And it's 12th regional title in the 24 years that Billy Hicks has been in command of this program. And uh, just, just nobody better. Uh, he couldn't remember, however, a, a regional title win like this. You have to go back five years to find a game, even in the regular season, that Scott County had won when scoring only 46 points. Louisville Eastern, 
February of 2013. I had to look that up when I got home because he couldn't remember. Uh, I'm sure, uh, sure it's not something he wants to revisit when they get to Rupp Arena. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the road to Rupp on the other side of our interview with Coach Hicks. But let's hear what Coach Hicks had to say about yet another run to uh, the promised land, so to speak, as he's taken his team back to UK. Scott County's hustle overcame the worst shooting night of the season in the regional final. They played hard. I thought LCA played a heck of a game as hard as I've ever seen a team play, but we did too. I mean, our kids battled. We didn't shoot it good, and, and, but you know, Cal, we, well, we, we, we hustled. Our kids played hard, and sometimes we probably over hustled too much or something. But, but it, it was uh, it was just really a, a really a great night for, you know, two two young te I mean two teams, two high school teams battling, and that's what Kentucky's all about. You know that the regional championship games are always really tough, as the first game of the district usually the, those are the most pressure on you of any games. The cards were too passive at attacking the Eagle Zone. You know, Cal, what disappoints me much look at the tape stuff and watching is, is uh, you know, we, we didn't really get in the gaps and create passing lanes to get the ball inside. You know, we just sort of settled for, like we was too cautious on offense. You know, in a zone, if you just pass the ball around the perimeter, well, that defense is going to slide right with you. That's what it's trained to do. You've got to screen it to disorient it. You've got to go in gaps to disorient it. And you've got to create passing lanes. But man, up top and the side, I, I want to check that floor at Eastern. I believe we wore a hole in the floor. We just dribbled it. We just sit there and just dribble it, dribble it, dribble it the same spot. You know, so we probably probably got a whole good sized hole working that floor now because we, we certainly dribbled in the same spot. Instead of moving instead of moving with the ball and, and going in the gaps and attacking, we, we just <laughs> right there in front of him and then passed it and the defense can slide it right with us. I, I thought we should have taken advantage of Cooper and Michael in the high post a lot more. Expect another stubborn zone defense from Trinity in the Sweet 16. Trinity's played more zone this year than I, than I, than I think I've ever seen Trinity play. The semifinal game against St. X looked like they played zone about 60 to 70% of the time. And then uh, I've watched most of the Ballard tape, and they played zone about all the time in the Ballard game. So that that is... I guess they've gone more to a zone-oriented game, and and, uh, and but you know, Cal, their man is like a zone. They just they just they play it so off to the basket, and they switch everything. So yeah, you know, it, it's I can, there's a whole lot of difference between their zone and their man. Except in the zone, they stay in their area. In a man, they will switch and, and get out of the area. So Trinity has size and the ability to shoot the three-pointer. Probably a little quicker at some positions. Uh, they shoot the ball really good from the perimeter, uh, like LCA does. Uh, there's no, there's no obvious weaknesses in them, Cal. They're they're a pretty solid basketball team. Uh, you know, Johnson is a really an outstanding athlete. He's got tremendous jump. He can really jump. Uh, Scrubs is just a can score inside, outside. He hit mid-range game, and Powell is a is a is a really good sophomore. Some say he's the best sophomore in the state of Kentucky. He can really shoot the ball really well, you know. So they, we, you know, they're they're definitely a very good a very good basketball team. Two of Trinity's three losses were to 11th region teams. Well, if you come through the 11th region, Cal, you can play with anybody, because the 11th region this year was by far the toughest region in the state. I mean, it goes up and down some. Sometimes it's between the 6th, 7th, and 11th. But uh, this year, the 7th was, I mean, the 11th was really, really a lot stronger than any region in the state of Kentucky. We had, we had top 10 teams in the state go out in districts. You know, teams up that good. Glenn Covington and Diablo Stewart have strengthened the Cards offense this year and will need to step up Wednesday. Well, I, I think you hit on two big things there, Cal. I think Glenn is so much more mature this year and a lot, lot better player offensively. I thought Glenn was a really good defensive player last year. His offense is, is so much better this year. He's passing, he's shooting the ball. Uh, every Glenn's rebounding better. Uh, Diablo adds a, a really great dimension to us. And against, uh, against Trinity, we're going to need 
his perimeter shooting because sometimes Trinity will get a Trinity will get very stubborn inside. Well, they, they just lock that thing down in there, and you've got to hit some outside shots. That's why we've had some success because we always had some guys who could hit some outside shots. Scott County is 11 and 0 in first round games at the Sweet 16 in the Hicks era. Yeah, what I like about it is we have a week to get ready for him. Cause I, I, I knew nothing about him, and I'm sure that that you know Coach Sabo knew nothing about us because we hadn't we don't play each other this year. We've got a, a good early January meeting next year in the Raymond Reed Classic, and in that in Laurel, and in South Laurel we play him next year in the regular season. So we really haven't seen each other this year, and, and I haven't seen him play live, and I'm, I'm sure he hasn't seen us play live. But you know a lot of tapes out there, and, and but this is a typical. Uh, Trinity team. They're they're very athletic, uh, very well coached, very well disciplined, uh, uh, tough kids. You know they're they you know you got to beat them. They won't beat themselves. The Sweet 16 draw should produce competitive matchups throughout the tournament. You know it balanced out. I, I think the the, the the top teams got scattered throughout the tournament pretty good. I think it could it could set up to be a really good quarterfinals, a really good semifinals and a really good finals. Uh, you've got good teams, Cal, in every bracket. L lower bracket has obviously Covcath, who's a really good team. Also in lower bracket, you've got Fern Creek. Upper bracket, you know, you've got, you've got us, you've got Trinity, you've got uh, John Harden's got a really good team. So there are a lot of, a lot of good basketball teams. Out there, and we just got to, you know, I, it, did, it did work out. It, and there's some teams that were surprises that weren't really outstanding teams in the regular season, but who knows, maybe they've come on. You know, a team like Jefferson Town come out of nowhere and went to the finals of the sixth and and obviously looked at the score, played played the heck out of Fern Creek up there. So and Fern Creek was and they won the L I T then. They won the King of the Bluegrass. Won one of those tournaments from Louisville. So so uh, you know Louisville was strange this year. I, you know, a lot of teams that you thought were going to just really dominate sort of lost out as the year went on to some teams that, that nobody wasn't thinking about. But uh, the Lambeths are just a bear all year. They're just there all year long. Kentucky State Tournament remains the one in America where school size is not a major factor. A lot of, a lot of states, you go out, they, look at, they, they see you, and they see the team a lot better than them, they just have fun and get beat. And nobody thinks they get beat in Kentucky. They all come to play, <laughs> and not this time, you know. <laughs> or if you beat them, we get you next year, <laughs> you know. So it's, it's the beauty of Kentucky high school basketball is, is the spirit of it. I think the, the essence of the, of the game is the spirit of the Kentucky high school basketball player. They're all living the dream, and every kid dreams of playing in Rupp Arena in the state tournament. You know, and, and the, you know, I'm just really glad our team has the opportunity. I'm glad we got a week to get ready for Trinity. And, and uh, you know, so it, it's going to be a tough first round for us and Trinity. Scott County is 26-9 and nine at Rupp Arena since Hicks took over in 1995. Yeah, I, I, I think we've had, we've had a good success over the years at Rupp. I, I think overall teams I've coached have won 26 games in there. I don't know if... Anybody, an Adolph or Rick or somebody, or, or Calipari or UK coaches won 26 games in there. Maybe not Gillespie. <laughs> we won a lot of games in there, yeah, in, in, in the Rupp Arena. And, and, but it, the next one's always the most important, and, and this one is, uh, you know, I, I, Scott County is so well represented down there. If you had all of Scott County fans to the state tournament all in one section, it would feel outside of gym up. But Scott County, we've gone so much that, they know how to get good seats all over the place. And, and, and one message I like to tell our fans, Cal, is that get, don't, don't be afraid to buy a ticket up in the upper level because after that first game, especially the team that gets beat, their fans will leave. And then all those seats will be available down there. You walk down and sit in them. So, that, you know, you can buy an upper, upper level ticket and still end up with a good seat to stay tournament. All right, that was Coach, and uh, as he mentioned, it's going to be a battle right off the top, uh, arguably two of the top three teams in the state. By the luck of the ping pong ball draw back about a month ago, we'll be going at it. As Scott County, your 11th region champion, takes on Louisville Trinity, the 7th region champion, 
Lexington area versus Louisville area. It's uh, the winner of that game potentially has an easier road to the final where they might end up seeing someone like Fern Creek or, or Covington Catholic. We'll see how it all plays out. But uh, certainly the tough end is early for whoever wins that game. That game against Trinity, 1.30 p.m. on Wednesday, March the 14th at Rupp Arena. From there on, it would be uh, noon Friday if they get to the quarterfinals once again, same as last year. And uh, then, it, then it goes to a Saturday and Sunday format from there. But first things first, that Scott County Trinity game is one you are not going to want to miss. The players have been there before. They have, uh, they've won this two years in a row now. They took their tour of champions last week. Got to visit all the elementary schools and, and the middle school and, and slap five and, uh, and greet the next, uh, the next wave of Cardinals, uh, hopefully, uh, for a lot of them. Uh, it's, a, it's a dream come true for a lot of these kids. It started in uh, kindergarten, first grade, up till now, and now most of them are juniors. Uh, you do have a senior in Cooper Robb and, and a huge junior class led by Michael Marino, Bryce Long, Diablo Stewart, Lorenzo Williams, Cam Fluker. The list goes on. Let's see what uh, some of the Scott County Cardinal players had to say about this latest trip to state. Defense and rebounding won the regional title for Scott County. I think our defense held them by two points, just enough. Uh, yeah, coach emphasized rebounding because they crashed the glass offensively and defensively. So if we kept it close or won the rebounding game, we had a good chance of winning. Teams have tried to slow down the cards, who in turn will do whatever it takes to push the pace. Uh, we just had to, we tried to speed them up, you know, pressure them. And um, at first it was working and then we started to get a little fatigue and they try to body us, you know, use their size on us. And we just had to fight through it. We stayed together on defense, got some stops, and towards the end we got the 50-50 balls that we needed to control the game and make them play at our game. Glenn Covington has emerged as one of the top defensive players in the state. That's my thing now is, especially this time of year when my shot's really not falling down, I try to focus more on defense and help my guys out as much as possible and make sure that my guy doesn't score. Scott County has spent the past week preparing for Trinity's zone. Uh, coach said we'll see a lot of zone because teams really are at a mismatch guarding us offensively man to man, so we have to work in zone. Oh yeah, that, that's one of our problems. That's what we practice today, you know, like working, working through gaps and getting in the gaps and actually like passing and moving, you know, because when you zone us, we just, you know, we try to slow down and, you know, play at their pace, but we won't play at our pace. So. That's what we try to do. Yeah, sticking with the game plan coaches give us before the game and penetrating the gaps and getting open looks or just taking and getting fouls to draw them out the zone. If the cards hit from outside early, it could allow them to control the pace of the game. Yeah, that's that's our thing. Like when we're in the flow on the offense and we're hitting threes like that and hitting our shots, and it's hard to stop us, you know. And it keeps our energy level up. This will be Diablo Stewart's first Sweet 16 appearance. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, we added a new player to us, you know, Diablo, of course, man. I mean, he's been a, a big help for us in our shooting and, and defense, too. And uh, he's just a big part of it. And everybody that stepped up this whole year has been a big part of this team. Stewart and Covington hope to rebound from a tough shooting night against LCA. I'd say we have to make our shots this game and uh, pressure to contain the ball, what Coach says, on, on defense, number one heat. I feel like we, I feel like, because they run zone too, I feel like if we, you know, do our thing and, you know, actually attack gaps and not just stand around and make our shots, we'll be fine. Last year's quarterfinal trip was a benefit to the Cards. Uh, especially, you know, just getting that first year experience for most of our guys and, you know, it was a big, big thing for us. So we should be able to go in there and, you know, not really focus on the crowd and everybody, you know, just play our game. I can kind of see Mike and Coop like really stay under control and they've been there before so that kind of showed a lot. Stewart transferred from Franklin County this season. It's something new but it's something I've always wanted to do since, uh, since I started in the driveway so it's a dream come true. I'm living my dream. Diablo says he will get back into his routine before the Sweet 16. <laughs> yeah because it's, it's kind of superstition like stuff I, certain things I have to do before the game I didn't do. Uh, region championship game, so that's really on my mind. That's kind of why I'm like 
down on myself because I feel like I kind of let the team down, but we still won, so it wasn't too bad of a game, but I figured I could have helped a lot, but I had to do what I got to do for the game. Most people probably think it's like bad, you shouldn't do it for the game, but I always have to lift weights in the morning before school.